Thank you all very much. His Excellency, Dr. Abiy Ahmed, Prime Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, the host of the 17th Internet Governance Forum, IGF 2022, and guest of honor. Mr. Lee Junhua, Under Secretary of the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, UNDESA. Mr. Antonio M. A. Pedro, Acting Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA. Excellency Ministers, State Ministers, Ambassadors, Commissioners, Honorable National Delegates, Participants of the 17th IGF, both here on site and all of you joining us online. Honorable Ladies and Gentlemen, all protocols observed. The 17th Internet Governance Forum, IGF 2022 Ethiopia, is now in session in Addis Ababa for a grand opening ceremony by His Excellency Prime Minister Dr. Abiy Ahmed of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much for joining us here today for this mega forum of the world of the Internet. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause to His Excellency the Prime Minister who is a great advocate of digital transformation and the world of cyber evolution in Ethiopia. And Ethiopia is hugely proud to be the host of the 17th edition of the IGF and the third country on the African soil since its maiden launch in 2006. This year's grand hybrid gathering is underway under the overarching theme Resilient Internet for a Shared, Sustainable and Common Future, happening here in Addis Ababa, the diplomatic seat of the African continent from the 28th of November to the 2nd of December 2022. To our international delegates, a very warm welcome to the vibrant Addis Ababa. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a big welcoming applause to our international delegates. This global multi-stakeholder platform is a historic event for the host nation of over 120 million people, most of whom are young men and women. Ethiopia, as a country, has demonstrated its commitment to the same goal by developing its own national digital strategy known as Digital Ethiopia 2025 with the motto Digital, digital Strategy, strategy for, for Inclusive of Ethiopia. Ethiopia has also taken other enormous steps in pertinent areas, such as liberalizing its telecom sector and drafting a data privacy policy soon to be approved by the Supreme Legislative Body, just to mention a few. Your Excellency, the Prime Minister, the 17th annual IGF is being hosted in a fully hybrid format with the aim of accommodating the participation of stakeholders present on site in Addis Ababa or participating online in an equitable manner. This year's IGF is underway on a unique digital platform where meeting discussions are taking place in an equal manner for all participants, regardless of whether they connect from the venue or any other part of the world. 
The program of the forum has been developed around five themes, connecting all people and safeguarding human rights, avoiding internet fragmentation, governing data and protecting privacy, enabling safety, security, and accountability, and addressing advanced technologies, including AI. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to the 17th meeting of the Internet Governance Forum. And it's now my pleasure to give the floor to Mr. Antonio M. A. Pedro, Acting Executive Secretary of UNECA, to give a welcoming address. Your Excellency, Dr. Abi Ahmed, Prime Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Honorable Ministers, Your Excellency Li Yuan, UN Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, esteemed delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor hosting you at the United Nations Conference Center here in Addis Ababa. You are warmly welcome. Let me begin by extending my appreciation to His Excellency Dr. Abiy Hamed, Prime Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, and the government and people of Ethiopia for hosting this important event on African soil for the second time in the history of the IGF. I wish to also convey my sincere gratitude to the IGF Secretariat for making the UN IGF in Ethiopia a reality. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a year since we last have gathered in this forum in Katowice, in Poland, and the world has continued to face dramatic changes since that time. The compounded effects of the most recent global crisis of climate change, of the COVID-19 pandemic, and the ripple effects of the war in Ukraine have made certain that the world will see even more challenges in the future requiring increased foresight capabilities driven by and facilitating further digital transformation. This year's forum under the overarching theme of a resilient internet for shared, sustainable and common future will focus many of its dis discussions on the critical challenge of binding the digital divide on multiple fronts in terms of connectivity, affordability and relevant content. It presents a vital opportunity to discuss accelerators for digital transformation and bridging the digital divide through coordinated action and advocacy. In this regard, we must not forget where this forum is taking place. On the African continent, only one in three people has access to the internet. This means that an estimated 871 million people are not connected. Access to the internet becomes even more limited when we, have, when we move from the urban to the rural areas. In addition, the usage gap is also becoming a pressing concern for Africa. Though 70% of Africa's population technically has access to mobile internet, less than 25% are making use of this service, resulting in an uptake gap of almost 50%. One key reason for this has been the high cost of mobile internet across the region, which automatically cuts off those in the low income earning margin. The lack of digital and literacy skills is another key barrier to achieving digital inclusion. These skill gaps have been further exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, where the expansion of online education, e-healthcare, e-commerce and remote work have left a large portion of the population without internet access even further behind. The need for meaningful digital connective, connectivity to boost sustainable development, particularly for the least developing countries, remains as true today as it ever has. Nevertheless, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, while at the moment Africa lags in, inf in infrastructure in several key areas necessary for the development, like universal access to electricity, mechanization of production, and industry automation, significant progress is being achieved across the continent. The exponential increase in e-commerce has created new jobs and income 
earning opportunities which have the potential to spur household income, lift people out of poverty, and increase resilience of rural communities. In Ghana, for instance, a business-to-business e-commerce platform, AgroCenter, connects 10,000 farmers with buyers, allowing farmers to secure a higher price for their production. Clinic O, a startup in Guinea, is providing digital healthcare to rural Guinea, and Kenya has introduced coding classes for schooling uh, going ch children. The Zindi Africa platform, with its network of 50,000 data scientists, is another notable example of how we are finding innovative solutions to Africa's problems. The platform connects data scientists with various organizations and facilitates learning and job placements for young people. Countries are working to create enabling policy environments, with Nigeria signing the, Start the Startup Act 2022 in October of this year, providing companies with a five-year tax break, joining Senegal and Tunisia, who have startup law frameworks in place. E-government is also taking root, helping to democratize access to social services and fostering social inclusion. In Rwanda, the online government services platform Irembo is allowing users to access, apply, and pay for government services. To date, Irembo has served over 11 million citizens in Rwanda and offers over 105 services online, ranging from civil status, health, education, land, travel, and transport services. Togo launched a, co uh, launched a called Digital Society Assistance Program Novisi, an unconditional tr cash transfer to assist informal workers whose livelihoods have been appended by the coronavirus pandemic. As of March 2021, uh, Novis has reached 890,000 uh, beneficiaries and distributed approximately to uh, 23.9 uh, million dollars. And right here in Ethiopia, Incredible work is being done in the deployment of innovative capabilities in robotics, machine learning, big data management, local languages processing, and computer visioning through the Ethiopian Artificial Intelligence Institute, ensuring that artificial intelligence supports socioeconomic programs such as health, education, agriculture, and decision-making process on urban administration, land administration, natural disaster prevention, and environmental hazards. These examples are evident that the Africa digital landscape is changing. Now is the time to double down our, off, our efforts to close the digital infrastructure gap and to leverage digital technologies to power key initiatives in support of achieving a greener, and more inclusive digital world and a just and sustained development for all. To this end, the operationalization of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement would certainly benefit from digital transformation, enabling e-commerce, reducing information asymmetries, improving efficiency in supply chain management, trade facilitation in general, to name a few. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the theme of this year's IGF and the five sub-themes resonate well, well with the work of ECA. Over recent years, the Economic Commission for Africa has been implementing and promoting various activities in supporting, connecting all people and safeguarding human rights, including through uh, organizing coding camps, such as the Connected African Girls Coding Camp, which has enabled more than 25,000 girls and young women aged between 12 and 25 years from all over Africa to develop skills on critical domains for Africa's development, avoiding internet, internet fragmentation by engaging in standard setting initiatives for an open and unfragmented internet with various organizations such as the Policy and Digital Transformation Initiative under the African Union, International Telecommunications Union, and the Smart Africa Initiative on Single Digital Market. Governing data, and protecting privacy through the development of the Africa Data Governance Framework endorsed by the African Union Heads of State and Government in February of 2022, providing the continent with a framework for the governance of that data. Enabling safety, security, and accountability recently through a partnership with the government of Togo to establish the African Center of Coordination and Research in Cybersecurity in Lome, Togo. 
This is with a view to equipping the continent against cybersecurity threats and attacks. We are also launching a report on the cybersecurity guidelines model law at this IGF. And lastly, ECA is working to address the deployment of advanced technologies, including artificial intelligence, to supporting the establishment of the first African Research Center for Artificial Intelligence, ACA, in Congo, Brazzaville, under the University Denis Sesongueso, which was inaugurated in March 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, the questions remain, how do we work towards and realize a resilient and unfragmented internet in our lifetime? There is need for a multi-sectoral approach that addresses these five priorities, which in turn reinforce the accelerated but sustainable realization of sustained development goals and Agenda 2063 of the, of the African Union. Let me leave you with what I see as key priorities moving forward. First, building resilient digital infrastructure is critical for development. Second, harmonizing regulations to remove barriers to connectivity is crucial. Third, context-specific and fit-for-purpose interventions are golden opportunities to create an ecosystem that enables public-private interconnectivity and a working national infrastructure. Fourth, the implementation of digital technology should progressively and continually mirror key principles of inclusion, representation, and accessibility. Fifth, private sector involvement is key to spurring digital development. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention, and I wish you a successful and productive conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Antonio Pedro, Acting Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, for welcoming us to this grand forum and to the ultra-modern conference facility here in Addis Ababa. I would now like to give the floor to Mr. Lee Junhua, Under Secretary General of the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, to say a few words and introduce the video message by the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres. Mr. Junhua, the floor is yours. Sir. Thank you. Your Excellency, Dr. Abi Ahmed, Prime Minister of Ethiopia, my dear colleague, Mr. Antonio Petro, Acting Executive Secretary of the Economic Commission for Africa, Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the UN Secretary General, Mr. Guter Antonio Guterres, I warmly welcome you to the official opening of the 17th Annual Meeting of the Internet Governance Forum. I have the honor to invite the Secretary General to deliver his video message. inequalities. We often hear that the future will be digital, but the future of digital must be human-centered. That ambition is reflected in your team, building a resilient internet for a shared, sustainable, and common future. It is also the motivation behind my proposed global digital compact on an open, free, inclusive, and secure digital future for all. We are aiming for this compact to be agreed by governments at the 2024 Summit of the Future with inputs from technology companies, civil society, academia, and others. The compact, firmly anchored in human rights, aims to deliver in three areas. First, universal connectivity. Closing the digital divide and reaching the three billion people who are offline, the majority of whom live in the global south. Second, a safe, secure, human-centered digital space begins with the protection of free speech, freedom of expression, and the right to online autonomy and privacy. But it does not end there. Governments, tech companies, and social media platforms have a responsibility to prevent online bullying and deadly disinformation that undermines democracy, human rights, and science. Third, the digital compact should focus on ways in which governments, working with technology companies and others, can foster the safe and responsible use of data. We are seeing the growing use and abuse of data. Our data is being used to shape and manipulate our perceptions without our even realizing it. 
governments can exploit that data to control the behavior of their own citizens, violating human rights of individuals and groups. We need to keep working for a safe, equitable and open digital future that does not infringe on privacy or dignity. I urge the Internet Governance Forum and its leadership panel to help carry all of these issues forward. Bringing together governments, the private sector, civil society and more through concrete actions for a safe, sustainable and inclusive digital future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I join the Secretary General in extending sincere thanks to our host, the government of Ethiopia, for bringing this important meeting back to its origin. My deep, con my deep con gratitude also goes to my colleagues in the Economic Commission of, for Africa for their outstanding support. Indeed, Internet Governance Forum received its mandate through the second phase of the World Summit on the Information Society held in Tunis in 2005. The Internet Governance Forum was again held in Africa more than 10 years ago in Nairobi in 2011. Yet, Africa is the least connected region with 60% of the population offline representing a majority of the 2.7 billion people who are offline globally. This is in a dark contrast with the developed regions such as Europe, the most connected region with 89% of its population enjoying the access to the internet. This places African countries and people at the greatest societal disadvantage and the risks risks them being left further behind. The vital road of internet in building Africa's sustainable future cannot be overstated. It is my hope that the IGF will help accelerate the Africa's transition to digital future. The internet is a springboard for us to rescue the sustainable development goals through the digital empowerment Digital technologies and the internet are serving as engines of the growth and the providers of the essential services, including through the support to the e-government and the growing digital economies. Powered by the internet, digital jobs and the e-commerce are growing even during the crisis. For an open, free and secure digital future for all, we need a resilient internet. The theme of the 17th Internet Governance Forum is most fitting. Our collective task here in Addis Ababa is to unleash the power and the potential of the resilient internet for our shared sustainable and common future. Building a resilient and empowering internet will mean addressing the dark side of our digital reality. While some of the challenges by digital disruptions, the unconnected are left further behind, called in the vicious cycle of the inequality, including intergenerational inequity. At the same time, the connected are confronted daily with misinformation, disinformation, and the fake news, impacting how we live, how we work, and how we interact with each other. And the cycle attacks, cyber attacks and the data fraud are more rampant than ever. Spend, hacking, fashion, denial of service attacks, invasion of the privacy, violation of the digital property rights, and the list goes on. Collectively, we must have stepped up to deliver a digital future that accounts for and addresses these failings. We must ensure that the promise of the technologies is not clouded by misuse and abuse. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where the Internet Governance Forum delivers as a convener and a connector. Global Internet governance is complex, 
No single person or institution can fully grasp its complexity or deliver a perfect solution. Joining us at this hybrid meeting, on-site or online, are leaders, experts, and stakeholders representing governments, international intergovernmental organizations, civil society, academia, technical communities, and the business engaged in the over 300 different sessions in this entire week. I believe there will be insightful and refreshing exchanges. From connecting all people to safeguarding human rights, from avoiding internet fragmentation to governing data and protecting privacy, and enabling safety, security, and accountability, and in addressing advanced technologies, let us spare no efforts in highlighting the promises and the pearls of the digital space. The inclusive multi-stakeholder approach of the Internet Governance Forum creates a, high, a level playing field for sharing policy solutions, best practices, and experiences for identifying the emerging issues and bringing in to the attention of the relevant bodies and the public. We must leverage the IGF to the land, to land the types of the concrete outcomes we want to see at all levels, whether it be the in shaping global norms and the standards or in forming national level regulations. Dear colleagues, I look forward to being part of the many important exchanges in the days ahead. The digital frontier is where the truly transformational power will be realized and an important space for accelerating progress towards the SDGs. The United Nations is fully committed to work with all of you for an open, free, secure, and a resilient internet for all. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Li Junhua. Under Secretary General of the United Nations Department for Economic and Social Affairs, thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now have a, the great honor and unique privilege to give the floor to His Excellency Dr. Abiy Ahmed, Prime Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and the guest of honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Excellency, Mr. Liu Junha, Under Secretary of United Nations, Honorable Ministers, Heads of Intergovernmental Organizations, Distinguished Members of the Private Sector, the Technical Committee, Civil Society, and Academia. Ladies and gentlemen, Nkwan Dehnamatachu. A warm welcome to our beautiful city and Africa's vibrant diplomatic capital, Addis Ababa. As you deliberate in upcoming days on the theme of resilient internet for a shared, sustainable, and common future, what better place to reflect on a common future than in the land of origins where humanity, as we know, it all began. So it has been 11 years since the Internet Governance Forum was held on the African continent. Ethiopia is pleased to host the 2022 IGF and is honored to welcome this global and diverse audience for a test of our history, culture, diversity, and ongoing transformation. Excellencies, the advent of the internet has no doubt revolutionized our global societies, economies, and politics. We currently find ourselves in a rapidly changing world order with the internet impacting real world developments and vice versa. The dynamism of our global community and the latest socioeconomic and political shifts warrant gatherings such as the IGF 
they will help us to co-create a shared understanding on the use and governance of the internet. In a highly globalized context, and with the hopes of closing the digital divide, most, if not all African nations have been leapfrogging in the realm. While there are many advantages to this, undoubtedly plenty challenges confront and await us as a continent with the dark side of the internet requiring adequate policies and practice safeguards to be in place. For Ethiopia, the past four years have been full of challenges and opportunities. For example, the internet has supported the spread of disinformation as Ethiopia in the northern part of the country. On the other hand, while the COVID-19 pandemic hit, internet offered the opportunity to conduct some government activities and businesses online, allowing for creative, creativity and the emergence of innovations. As a developing country, we recognize that our aspirations and the international journey to realizing a prosperous Ethiopia, a conducive and inclusive for all is intimately tied to advancement in technology. The internet thus provides a means of securing our ambitious targets as laid out in national 10 year perspective plan. At a time where we are emerging from harsh economic effects of global pandemic, a conflict, a vulnerabilities due to climate change, our economy is the third largest in Sub-Saharan Africa. We remain steadfast in our commitment to achieving food sovereignty, increasing industrialization, boosting tourism, maximizing gains from our mining sector, and promoting a green and climate conscious culture. All this are being supported through mainstreaming ICT of which the internet is key. Excellencies, Ethiopia's ICT and digital transformation journey has been marked by key progress milestones aligned with the five sub-teams of 17's IGF. Considering our large and growing population, improving connectivity and expanding accessibility has been a priority with investments being made in infrastructure expansion, opening up the telecom sector to private investors and building government digital infrastructure. Internet coverage shows an increase from 19 million users in 2017 to 13 million in 2022. Rolling out 4G network in, po in populated towns and 5G network in major cities is accelerating connectivity. Over 2,300 high schools throughout the country have internet access. Two years ago, we adopted a national digital strategy, which lays out a unified vision for Ethiopia's progress towards an inclusive digital economy. The strategy focuses on developing infrastructure, enabling systems, digital platforms, and building the digital ecosystem. In efforts to enabling safety, security, and accountability, the government has taken various measures to strengthen national cybersecurity and institutions. Besides protecting the cyberspace of the country, these institutions are working on raising citizen awareness on related matters. The Ethiopian government recognizes the benefit of artificial intelligence and has committed to use the new technology for national development in Davos. We have established an institution dedicated to AI-related research and development activities in the country. We also established an AI institute dedicated to work on Ethiopia's national interest and competitiveness through the development of AI services, products, and solutions. 
The Institute is currently working in various sectors, including health, education, agriculture, transport, as well as on public protection and safety. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the internet's contribution to social development is immense. The democratization of knowledge and communication, access to entrepreneurship skills and new employment opportunities, healthcare access and education are a few noteworthy ones. However, today the principle of neutrality of the internet is questioned. Giant platforms control the content that use, users can access. They control their personal data and with the power of artificial intelligence, they very quickly cease to be gateways and rather become gatekeepers. In politics, it has also allowed greater participation, but it has also posed a threat to political stability, sovereignty, and democratic values of nations. The key elements of internet politics are the manipulation of information to frame ideas and behavior, the spreading of misinformation and rumors by individuals protected by anonymity has become a common practice. Excellencies, our lap rapidly evolving global digital landscape is allowing us to produce massive amount of data, but cautious optimism is required and, and mainly around ownership of critical infrastructure, data strategy, and data governance and cybersecurity. Countering imbalances in ownership of submarine cables, terrestrial fiber optic, optic networks, and data centers, as well as international data traffic routes, particularly for Africa, are dependencies that risk jeopardizing state autonomy. We need to have data strategies to strengthen privacy standards. We also need to prevent feeding the artificial intelligence industrial development and surveillance capacity of third parties. Data governance should also aim at harmonizing rules in the, in the digital ecosystem to spur economic growth while protecting individual rights. African countries should be able to influence standards in a way that it corresponds with our values and enables us to participate in innovative emerging technologies. This is why the focus should be on building trust, equity, and security in cyberspace. The IGF was created to pave the way for discussions on issues that would ensure sustainability, security, stability, and development of the internet. I would like to call upon this forum, whose quality of discussions and debates are renowned to produce more than just reflections. We need to see tangible, pragmatic, and implementable proposals to ensure we create the resilient, safe, and inclusive global community we all want. I commit to review the deliberation of this forum and wish you all a successful 17th edition of the United Nations Internet Governance Forum. Have a pleasant stay in Ethiopia, and I encourage you to visit our new science museum among the many new splendors of our vibrant city, Addis Ababa. I thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Dr. Abiy Ahmed, Prime Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and guest of honor, ladies and gentlemen, now His Excellency, the, the Prime Minister, will be joined by Mr. Lee Juan and also Mr. Pedro for uh, a group picture uh, before His Excellency, the Prime Minister, leaves us. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the Prime Minister, as I said earlier, is an ardent advocate of digital transformation and the cyberspace, especially for developing country like his own. And it's something close to his heart. So I think he deserves a huge congratulation as he brings home this huge global gathering to Addis Ababa for 
days of important deliberations in this case. Would you please sit down, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much.